I have an announcement to make. I, I, I think the Phoenix Suns just won the NBA championship. I mean, saying it respectfully, I don't, I don't know how teams are going to guard us. The Sun season ends with a first round sweep. July 8th, 2021. The Phoenix Suns on a 14-2 power trip had just ran through the playoffs, beating down on LeBron and AD after their championship win, embarrassing the best player in the world in a 4-0 sweep, and stampeded into the finals before jumping out to a 2-0 lead. What really seems like the most cursed franchise in basketball was knocking at the door of one of the most memorable championship runs in recent memory. The Phoenix Suns? You can't help but to feel happy for them, because they weren't supposed to be here. First Phoenix Suns chip in history, first Arizona championship since Randy Johnson was hitting birds, and first chip in Chris Paul's Hall of Fame career. And the misery of those disastrous Suns teams ever since Steve Nash left the team finally paying off. It really seemed too good to be true, and that's of course because it sure as hell was. After getting stomped out four games in a row, the Suns had the ball back in their court as a young team who was inches away from gold under the NBA's brightest lights. With the core still developing, now having gathered experience from a deep playoff run, the Suns' decade-long rebuild had finally resulted in a team that was good enough to put it together. But ever since jumping up 2-0 in that series, the Suns have seemingly been free-falling into basketball hell. Despite having some of the most scoring talent that the game's ever seen, even comparative to KD's stacked resume, the Suns may be in the worst position in basketball history, and that's no exaggeration. Not only was their first round sweep from the Timberwolves an embarrassment on the biggest stage, but this beatdown really just opened the world's eyes on the nightmarish reality of how bad these morons ruined their future. In the same way that Rome wasn't built in a day, the biggest shit show in basketball didn't cultivate overnight. So let's relive how the Phoenix Suns turned their championship dreams into a living nightmare. If you're anything like me, your earlier memories of the Suns were quite a bit different. As one of the top teams at a time where the Western Conference may have peaked proportionately, the mid to late 2000s was really the last time we saw Phoenix in the limelight. Despite failing to reach the finals, the spread pick and roll 7 seconds or less Steve Nash teams were one of the most entertaining teams of all time and were actually incredibly effective reaching the Western Conference finals 3 times before Nash was sent to a nursing home. After riding the coattails of a wave that captivated the whole city, the 2010s may have been the opposite. Unlike the speed of the Mike D'Antoni Suns teams, the 2010 Suns never seemed to get out of the hamster wheel of disappointments. With guys like Marcin Gortat, Jared Dudley, and most notably Goran Dragic, the Suns managed to tread water as they eased out of the Steve Nash era into the early to mid 2010s. But really, this was the worst case scenario. With a core that had little room to grow, there was no exit route from mediocrity, with the talent that they withheld for far too long. The Suns were stuck as their mid first round draft acquisitions were not exactly pieces turning them in the right direction. And if it wasn't for the absolute savior of the decade in selecting D Book 13th overall in the 2015 draft, you might just have to call this decade a wash altogether. With their other lottery picks being Alex Len, 5th overall in 2013, producing pretty much nothing, Dragon Bender being the most charm and soft player I've ever seen in my life, and Josh Jackson doing pretty much nothing but shucking bricks and getting baked with little kids. Hello, before they traded Jarrett Culver in 2019, they even managed to snag the biggest bust on the board then too. The Suns have been a terrible drafting team for quite some time now, and even comparative to other big shit shows in the NBA, this decade of picking the wrong guys and failing to build any sort of supporting cast has turned this team into an identity-less franchise, constantly throwing darts at the board, seeing what the hell would stick. I mean, after drafting Devin Booker, these guys failed to win 25 games in a season for the next four years, despite having one of the best young bucket getters in the league. Although being one of the most frustrating case studies in the NBA and being picked ahead of the guy who shall not be named, the first overall acquisition of DeAndre Ayton was finally the turning point after an extended run of tanking. Literally, the addition of one guy who doesn't even want to play most of the time effectively doubled their win total in two years, as they finally had somewhat of a foundation to build upon, surrounding pieces like Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio, Mikhail Bridges, Cameron Johnson, and Dario Saric. A team that although could have used an upgrade in some areas, had the identity that they've so long lacked. With Ricky Rubio as an underrated floor general, surrounded by floor spacers, a go-to scoring machine, and a secondary three-level scoring threat in Kelly Oubre and a solid big man in DeAndre Ayton. Although the world was yet to find out somewhat, Mikhail Bridges growing next to Booker might be the best wing that you could pair with Book's game going forward. As well as Cam Johnson giving two ridiculous 3 and D threats, 
that going forward are really the forgotten pieces built into every modern championship team. What clearly was missing from this franchise was a long-term playmaker. I mean, I love Ricky Rubio as much as the next guy, but the guy wasn't exactly a championship point guard, especially on a young team. And come the 2020 draft, the saving grace after the decade-long struggle was looking them right in the eye. A 20 points, 11 assists guarantee who can fit right into the Suns system like a glove immediately and a piece together this young team into what looks like a scary new start for a scary new decade. But they passed. The major, major miss of not filling their guard slot with Tyrese Halliburton is a miss that's rarely talked about, but was one that could have easily saved the screw up from ever happening. Drafting Jalen Smith, well, though was actually pretty sick on the Pacers, served no role on the Suns and really had no reason to be there. As I don't know why you had a big man that didn't fit the Suns' needs when the solution to your problems is staring at your face. It's pretty common knowledge that Halliburton wanted to be a part of the Kings' rebuild before he was taken by them two picks later, but the misconception that Halliburton was against going to Phoenix is nothing more than a false media narrative. You know, there's that story, people, the media and people make this up, which that I, I, I forced my way to Sacramento. Like that is, that is not the truth at all. The truth is if I told one or two teams not to draft me, it was Atlanta and it was Cleveland. It couldn't really be clear. And had this pick hit, I think Phoenix may have been able to forgive their front office for the decade of misery. But the consequences of this misstep would not be realized immediately due to the addition of another start guard. Just two days before, the Suns went shopping for a guard making a major splash with the addition of Chris Paul. Although immediately coming in as the most valuable piece on the roster according to every advanced metric, and still putting his name in MVP races every year, the picture-perfect addition of the point guard still left the Phoenix Suns as the 15th ranked most likely team to win the NBA Finals in 2021. With a young team who's talented but hasn't won shit, and a geezer point guard who's talented but also hasn't won shit, the Suns capitalized on the inopportune timing of others in a major way this season. Although very impressive, the injuries plaguing the Lakers in round one of the postseason and the Clippers in the conference finals gave the Suns a bit of a cakewalk in the 2021 finals, comparatively to what it could be at least. And as the Suns' firepower forced a quick 2-0 lead, putting up 118 a game in the first two games, everything would of course crumble and the games to fall. Other than Game 3, failing to close it out in close games would turn a winnable series into a sad trip home, as the Suns' lack of experience, even Paul's lack of finals experience, possibly steamrolled their hopes. Late game turnovers and a lack of consistent play as a unit caused their guys, who the world seemed to love to watch win, see the prize of their hard work fall out of their grasp. Although failing to take home a championship, the future seemed bright in Phoenix. With big four of Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges, and Cam Johnson retaining the hope for the future as one of the brightest young cores in the league. But that's just where we all missed the truth of the situation. Mikhail and Cam Johnson, although being a great and very solid player respectively, had never grown to consistent pieces to guarantee that they're going to be around for the long haul. DeAndre Ayton's heavy plateau due to his motivations being more self-centered meant that this course connection was a bit looser than it seemed, and the glue keeping them together was a 36-year-old whose time was ticking quickly. Despite running up a crazy 64-18 record in the regular season, the Suns quickly became the biggest disappointment of the 2022 playoffs. Losing in 7 to the Brunson and Luka-led Mavericks, the infamous Game 7 loss may have been what put the Paul Book 8 and Suns out of commission. In a 32-point blowout that still seems to undervalue how hard the Suns team cracked when game planned perfectly. Constant doubling and trapping on a Paul and Book caused this team to crumble. And as the momentum shifted away from these guys, they had already booked their trip to Cancun. As ownership changed the following season, they would very quickly flip the identity of this team entirely. Matt Ishbia came in with a $4 billion acquisition of the Phoenix Suns to instantly pop the team's bubble. In moves that the world supported at the time, the mid-season acquisition of Kevin Durant came at the cost of current depth and future talent, moving Bridges and Cam Johnson likely the most valuable supporting pieces over the last three years, as well as three first-round unprotected picks. The big three may have made this team instantly more frightening to play against, but at the cost of their identity entirely. The Suns were able to win games and make playoff runs with Paul and Booker center stage without often needing the best player on the floor, because simply when it came down to it, this team checked all the boxes. With an army of 3 and D threats around one of the best point guards to ever do it, a go-to scoring threat and a physical big man good enough to get the job done, despite your talent level, if you didn't have a system and game plan in place to counter these guys, frankly, they could stop all over you. As Paul's game really began declining the following season, 
Having seen how far they've gotten with this core when all is well, the fading window forced management to act in a way which in retrospect seems completely irrational. Although on paper, 30 points plus 30 points plus another 60 or 50 from your supporting cast equates to you winning the score off, HBO's big splash wasn't what we hoped. Now the more talented team in every matchup, the team that once could take down rosters loaded with talent from head to toe had completely flipped the script. With an offense now centric on KD and Booker isolations and on-ball screens into more isolations, if these guys don't just outscore you off of star carry jobs, they were pretty beatable. And as the homegrown Denver Nuggets system stayed consistent to the system that worked for them, they really didn't need to make too many adjustments to beat these guys. After the failure on the first go-around, the Suns were already facing the troubles of trying to trade into a championship. Chris Paul now on an expiring with a game that finally began to free fall, the Suns' big four was really more so two professional scorers with an average starting point guard on an overpaid expiring and DeAndre Ayton, who treats his job like he's a 7-Eleven employee while surrounding everyone by G-leaguers. The Suns would quickly move Ayton in a move to cover for their lack of depth somewhat, bringing in Nurkic and Grayson Allen, which was a bit of a saving grace this season, as it's clear Ayton's not improving anytime soon. But the real move that had the world talking came with the disposition of Chris Paul. Moving Paul and Shamit as well as every draft pick until 2030, the Suns made one of the worst moves I've ever seen in my life. Having already move depth and future assets for KD, the Suns give up their entire future and current system point guard for a piece that serves the same role as their two highest usage players but does it less effectively, all while being one of the worst contracts in the NBA. A $60 million two guard who does a little more than score and hasn't made an all-star game in three years. The decision to add Bradley Beal to the roster has clearly failed, as most people have let you know as of late. But no matter how many times it can be said, it doesn't make it any less crazy. In one deal, the Suns gave up all their picks for an untradeable contract while forcing their franchise player to play out of position in a role that he simply can't do well in expectance of winning immediately with a Western Conference that's out of this world and will only get better. Even when their overalls went up, this isn't 2K My League. An adequate 49-win season just to get absolutely demolished by the Minnesota Timberwolves was the final result from what's basically the final form of the Suns. With Booker, Durant, and Beal taking up over $150 million, and Grayson Allen now set to get paid as well, there's pretty little you can do to improve this team. With a system that's night and day from just a few years ago, the isolation heavy mid-range shooting team with a terrible supporting cast, and can't guard a traffic cone has no shot at playoff success. These guys should have taken note as the big three Lakers with the Russ flopped before our eyes. Acquiring the best talent regardless of fit does not work in the modern NBA, and really never worked at any other point either. They get hot on a regular season run as teams don't have time to game plan after traveling across the country on a back-to-back, -back. but as the Timberwolves exposed in a seven-game series, these guys are a cakewalk. In a playoff run, it's the Jaden McDaniels, it's the Mike Conleys, the Kyle Andersons, and the Nikhil Alexander-Walkers that turn talented teams to championship winners. It's not more volume shooters. The exit route for the Suns out of this train wreck is really difficult to pinpoint, as with no picks, blowing up the team and banking on other people's picks isn't reliable, Beal is untradeable, and adding a point guard is going to be tough given how expensive this damn team is. A guy at a minimum like a Pat Bev or even if CP came back to Phoenix can only do so much. As with Beal Booker and Grayson Allen on the floor, only getting smaller on a team who was forced to give Drew Eubanks real minutes at the center position. Over the next few years, there's likely not a world where we don't see the Suns as a fringe playoff team who fade back into no man's land as their stars age. After decades of failing to home grow their talents, the Suns pulled the trigger on a move that almost put it all together. But due to the lack of winning culture in this organization, it just couldn't happen. And as the team got impatient, they tried to drop a bomb on the NBA, but all they really did was destroy themselves. The Phoenix Suns are really just a learning experience for the NBA as a league that become way too quick to make a splash for instant gratification. I'd like to tell you that there may be a way out of this, but if I was a Suns fan, it would be hard to be optimistic about basketball hell. If you liked this video, check out my last one here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.